Are we all see you? Um, yes, we are. Oh, there. Thanks, person. Okay, it is 8 p.m. and I'd like to call the system number 25th East Line Board of Ed regular meeting order. Those of you who stand, stand for the pledge of allegiance. There are any uh, public comment? Is there any public comment? Uh, any public comment? Okay. Close public comment. We have some minutes to approve. Do we have any changes from the region? Second. Other discussion changes? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Um, opposed, say aye. So, through. so now we go to the first uh, edition of our student representatives. So welcome back to Hira and Dalen Malcolm. Uh, Dalen, maybe when, when you go, maybe introduce yourself. And if you're going to give a little update on anything, what you did, what, what did you do over the summer or anything? Uh, you're doing well. Yeah, so over the summer, I talked about to our award <laughs> So, um, my summer, I would say, I got there with my family, so you guys have fun. It's all about fun. Thank you, right? And Daylin, you're a junior. <laughs> right, well, welcome to the board of ed. We do. Welcome both of your opinions on this stuff. It's not only your updates, but you also appreciate the time to get to talk and so I appreciate it. Yeah, so okay. I just have yep. not much, obviously, the school other than the month, but there's a few events. So, first of all, in this year, I'm going to do that with us. It's the first year event for this year. We are pretty successful. We ate and we did a lot of games. Grass, it was very fun. It was fun to be back to that. And then during that, we did the lottery for the senior lot parking spots. So, exactly 65 people signed up, which is the number of spots we had. So, it's perfect. Everyone got a spot. And there were multiple days of being just now, all the spots came in. Um, senior prom is going to be in this area, very far away, but um, tickets should be significantly cheaper if we do have. Significant amount of money spent up right now. And then today we decided, we not fully decided the design, but we decided for senior shirts and that is going to have a new name on it and then it will be white. Um, Spirit Week is going to be October 23rd to the 28th. And the Commons decorating team has decided to be major world cities. So seniors have LA slash Hollywood. Juniors have New York City, Southwest have Paris, and freshmen have been to Sicily. And the cause for cause day is going to be Maui, Wildfire, and Color, and we can decide again. But there was one proposal that the Senate asked me to make, and it was for the one month for during Spirit Week. It would be asked that every year, but you know. Yeah, to go good. back to one month wait, or just for the one year? Just for the Spirit Week. Um, I know one thing that they were saying was that freshman year for us seniors is like in the cohorts, they were like, to make up for that. This is a whole touch So the council are just going into English classes for seniors to keep them in the long run, so they're in the middle of their college applications with that phase. And people are pretty stressed about that, but hopefully it's going well for everybody. The student's deadline I heard so far on October 15th, which is really soon. 
and for other reports, said article will soon when on and not to be on the majority claim for the semi-finalist for the 2024 National Merit Scholarship. And the current students in that program will be converted to being half on Michael Chen and he'll be on the other. This is the applicant who be the boy applicant who be the opening up on the and girl ready for the fresh girl to receive the first year starting for the next stadium. Um, back to school night was on September 7th. I didn't hear much about that. I feel like not that many parents of seniors go. It's kind of a fourth year, but. <laughs> um, senior college application night was the 15th. Um, I know sports and some other events were going on at that time, so I don't know a lot of things that went, and I personally didn't go, so I don't know much about that. Um, school photos are tomorrow and the day after during English classes. And on that note, senior pictures are due November 1st, so I know a lot of students are going to your pictures to school. Um, the triad induction ceremony will be held in the auditorium on Wednesday. For seniors, another thing for college, there's a field trip to the University of New Haven for a college fair on the board. They release the permission slips for that for any that's interested. And on October 18th, juniors will be taking the PSAT, and at the same time, I know the Spanish Apple exam will also be taking place. I'm not sure about the other things. And I know last year there was an opportunity for seniors to work on the college as a the workshop, but I haven't heard anything about that in this year. So, let's see. Um, the juniors decided that their phone is going to be located at Fort Starboard. I'm not our junior, so I don't have many details about that. Um, your book orders have begun. The club fair is on much bridges in the North Jam Swim Mall. The clubs are not going to poster and setting up their stands for that. A light report. Yeah. <laughs> I found that to be very comprehensive, covered lots of ground in many topics. And just a side note on you commented about the um, back to school night. And they're sitting at the table, and there's three minutes to see that. And I didn't know. But I, 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 it, was, it was not well attended. I senior, I senior, I senior. senior You're right. But, but I know so many teachers. They said that they got talked to good around here. They yeah, I don't like all of them. I don't want to talk to But I have some good ones. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? You get a lot of one on the team as a senior parent. Good <laughs> question. Thanks so much. You're not going to make Cleveland stay the whole time. Thank you. Thank you. So, moving on to discussion action items for instruction, and as part as we've talked about. We're having uh, different principals or administrators come in and give updates as part of their agendas. And tonight we have um, Buddy Kelly giving an update on the middle school and Deb Kelly giving an update on the middle school. I'm not sure how you're going to work it. So, my name is Buddy. How are you? Um, what I wanted to share with you this evening is looking um, at some of the things that align with the board goals. Um, some of the areas that we've never able to cover so far at this point with regards to pathways programming. Um, we are going to be working with um, Mr. Casulo, who is in process of setting up an upcoming meeting where several different principals will be meeting um, to talk about um, the electric gold reps and um, how we might be able to utilize um, some of their supports going forward. So that is very preliminary and some of the things that we have made it coming up going forward. So that would be a really good um, um, looking forward to getting more information and to make sure to be able to align that going forward. 
Um, our counselors are also, every year we have reps um, from different tech schools that come in and present to our grade eight students, and typically run over the discussion on the holidays in the cafeteria. So we're looking at changing things up a little bit. They're still be coming in, but having all of the reps on one day and having students rotate through almost to set it up like a tech fair for the year, similar to a college fair. Um, so we're working with the counselors and then having that stuff that should be happening um, early October as well. So um, stay tuned for more information about that. Um, we have started off with regards to the school year. Um, I feel like it's a really great place. Some of the things that really can capture and highlight um, the culture and climate at East Glen Middle School. We started off um, back in August when we had our grade five students come in for their making their orientation to the district and the students. Uh, we had ordered um, t shirts that said Ask Me and um, had our names on the back. And we wore those that the incoming fifth graders and the students know that the administrators, the counselors, the social workers, and the area office staff would be wearing those on the first day. So if they were uncertain or they were sure, unsure of where they were going to the building or how to them up, they can see a face that they can recognize with those brand new shirts be able to do with um, office support. So I think that worked out really well. Um, we also had um, the vice rollout that went really, really smooth. So um, they kudos to our tech department. Um, our students um, from grade five, um, incoming fifth graders, have done a wonderful job acclimating to the building. Um, you know, there's a lot of work that was done with regards to the transition in the end of grade four. Um, a lot of presentations, a lot of discussions, a lot of points met with them, and they're doing this for a job. They are made really well. Um, so I can see them um, just hitting the ground running and um, walking into their classes and seeing the game with the teachers. And, um, they've also participated over at grade five um, in Deadpool and Camp Hazen to partake in team building activities, which really helps um, students and staff be able to get to know each other, talk away, and uh, work together for the building support each and on the team. So that's been really exciting. Um, I love that they've actually supported the stage when they went. Um, we also administratively had to go on through every single one of the team to the team to the building to talk about and review the guidelines, the expectations, um, and to answer any questions that students may have about the handbook, um, the going through some of the policies and standards, and um, just reviewing um, up to date things that the students seem to be made um, refreshed about. Um, we also hosted a breakfast or luncheon for our staff um, for them at the very beginning of the year. and. Um, being kind of fun um, for breakfast, um, you know, it's right on the PD day um, back in September 1st. So that was, that was nice to see. Um, we also hosted our back to school night last Wednesday. It was very nicely, well, well, well attended. Um, tweaked it a little bit. So we had a great five, six parents come. We had a slight kind of an intermission to be able to have um, parking availability and a little bit more accessibility. And then we ran from the grade seven, eight in the same night and passed the two separate nights. So for families with students um, and the and the grade levels to participate, um, the feedback that we got from families we were appreciative of how they got to staff um, and it was well attended. Um, and also in October, we'll have our taste of arts coming up as well. So we'll have more information on that to come. Um, we are utilizing um, the training um, with regards to restorative practice. We start our faculty meetings uh, with that in terms of touching base, um, reflection for our staff. We've been incorporating that large component with regards to the circle and starting out into the meetings. People should share, uh, giving um, staff the opportunity to just share out. Um, same thing with students, we've been highlighting and focusing with regards to some of the diversity um, in the equity, um, asking for student volunteers, um, working with our building-based teams to have um, different students have unwind news and highlight some of your some of their cultural or religious traditions. Um, last week we had students talk about the Jewish holidays. Um, we have some staff members as well as students that will um, that we'll be sharing out on Hispanic um, Heritage Month. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we are also um, going to looking to have two of our middle school students um, um, attend and participate um, at the MLK Martin Luther King Scholarship Dinner, um, which is a nice event. It's really highlighted for high school students. 
but the purpose of that is to kind of twofold to be able to link families with resources that are available with scholarships for students in their junior year of high school and to just have our students start thinking about um, setting a goal and being on what is the table for them. Um, that's a very touching the ones that we think I was fortunate enough to be at that event last year. Um, it just was an amazing night hearing some of the students' stories and families and um, was available and um, was, was really thank you for um, so we also have uh, our mentor program is really off the ground and running very well. To date, uh, we have 10 pairs. We have mentors and um, identified mentor students. And those are students from grades six, seven, and eight. So we have 10 pairs that are currently running with three additional mentors that are waiting to be paired up with students in the building as well. Um, our counseling area, we have reconfigured. So we now have our school counselors in what we're calling a counseling suite, where they're all located in one area. They also have, um, they're running more uh, groups, and some of which include um, that is up and running, or will be coming, excuse me, shortly as a study school group. And they currently are running uh, student groups for new students as well. So that is up and running. Those are all age ones in grade five and eight. Lots of clubs going, so we can just do our country leaders club of gardening, change science. And we're working really hard on um, trying to be able to highlight and send things to staff members and open appreciation and recognize the important things that we've done throughout the year. Our folks are extremely important for my industry to be able to bring to everyone and to be able to staff member and for to be able to go and say to them for something that will stand up and you know, beyond. So, Working hard in doing that. With regards to instructional practices, we have had our coaches and some of our staff members from our team leader, as well as um, curriculum fellows that have presented on explicit instruction. The, well, the learning walks that I have been on with the superintendents and the superintendent, I think it's also by really great things that are happening in the classroom. We have seen the learning outcomes that are posted. We've seen uh, different portions of what the suggestion that we be present in the classroom. So we want to put the parts highlighting what's happening there and going back and visiting the learning outcomes. So lots of really great things. And um, our coaches and our staff are doing a great job. And, um, it's a very important thing to hear from the staff as well. We see it very well in the um, Another exciting thing coming up, fingers crossed, uh, we have applied for a math grant, which uh, we will hopefully hear by October 1st of whether or not we are the recipient of that. And that is involving tutors that will come in and support students um, with regard to grade level work. So that would be a huge help, especially with our tiers of work instruction in the classroom. So again, fingers crossed that that goes through. Uh, we said that, that would help with our work in terms of trying to be able to booster, um, bolster, and boost our math scores. Our learning lab is um, up to full swing, and that is, um, we kind of renamed that from Flex. That is where tier two support is happening in the classroom. That is being done by our general ed teachers. And uh, right now we've supported it in grade five by our coaches to help the science and social studies teacher assist with the brain um, support in the area of math and the English arts. Our teachers love this. We now have rolled out technology called Dino, which helps them to be able to uh, monitor the engagement and what students are doing or not doing in the classroom setting and making sure that they're focused. And it's a great way they can monitor the work of what we send messages and might be gentle reminder to stay on top. Or wow, you're doing a great job. So that that's been a really big score I think for um for the support teachers and being able to reflect on the classroom. As you as you hopefully recollect the presentation we did last year on the grade five schedule, we increased time in math and English language arts to 60 minutes. So that has gone well. Again, our coaches have been really instrumental with regards to helping some of the teachers facilitate and um, making sure that the explicit instruction concept is being carried over uh, during that time. So that has been soon transitioned to the year as well. And then we are also um, our grade five English language arts teachers um, are um, utilizing Imagine Learning, which is a reading pilot that we will be um, doing work with until December. So that is something that I'm just spending a lot of time working really hard on. 
the, the feedback has been that they like the program and there's just a plethora of information so that I'm trying to be able to work with the coaches to streamline what they feel is most relevant relevant um, in the six minute content within six minutes of the process. Lastly, with regards to branding and social media, um, Mr. Anderson, I can't take credit because I am not text out in the least, but he's done a phenomenal job with regards to keeping up to date with our Facebook and Instagram posts. Some of the things if you followed us include uh, teachers going over behavior expectations with the different uh, positions, whether it's bus or in the cafeteria, uh, staff during PD day, the engagement and the questions. Um, we've also put in there reminders with regards to yearbook, the number of library books checked out today, uh, pictures of different staff or administrative assistants or family know who they are. Um, we also posted, we received from our EPA um, an update with our um, 11 12 uh, athletes. Um, they were Little League State Champs. So there's a picture of a you know, poster, and they actually just were on. Fenway Field last Friday, because they were also recognized for the number of charitable um, contributions that they were supposed to collect. So they were recognized right then at Fenway. Mm -hmm. I know you, you just put a lot out there. Yeah, and I, yes. I don't understand the dino, is it? Thank you. Oh, okay. um, so you might know it as security, maybe in my own life. No, it's um, it is a monitoring system for teachers. So if I'm a teacher in a classroom, my students might have their laptops up, and I can see what's on their screen from my from my own device. So I can monitor what they are accessing over the course of the um, class period. I could also sort of whitelist the only things kids can act could kids can access while they're in my class. So if I know there's only three websites they need to get to during my classroom, I push, I tell Dino I only want them to be able to access these three websites during the period of my class. And those are the only three websites they can access. But it also has a messaging system. So I could be providing feedback to someone. I really like the way you're diving deep into the content that you're reading or Hey, it looks like you might need to get back on task. You know, um, so definitely. So uh, that's it's a, a software platform that allows you to do that. It's a monitoring software. I think it's helped by that. Some of that, um, so just that be time to engage in class because as you know, in the classroom, you can't really be in all the in one place all the time. So it allows I think more of the control of the focus of what happens in the class. So and if you log on, they have to log in through that. Nope, it's automatically on their computers. So it runs through ClassLink in our rostering. Okay. Um, uh, so they can't go out in, in any other direction. Well, no way they you know, <laughs> <laughs> <It's quite laughs> so um, it's pretty locked down. Okay. It's pretty locked down. It's, they try. They try. They, they, I'm sure they try. <laughs> but you know, it does help with um, the little games that they might be up and running that have all the little back ways to get in, and you know, they have their proxies, and um, so it helps to shut down and you know, monitor those things so that kids are focused in the last minute. Which also makes kids safe. Do they know they're being monitored? Uh, they do not, um, but they could in terms of the, the um, teacher could actually have the platform up on their clear touch board so that every, every kid's screen is up. But um, as a part of our acceptable use policy, um, you know, if those devices are our devices and we have the right to monitor their use while in school. So we'll know quickly. <laughs> so you might, you're finding it pretty efficient. Very yeah. beneficial. Yeah, very, very, very. Most districts use a platform like this, and we were kind of, um, you know, I, 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 for whatever reason, we didn't really necessarily um, look into it until last year, and uh, we had a small cohort of people pilot last year, and they found it really, really beneficial. It was uh, really very cost effective and uh, no brainer to the plan. But the teacher still walks around the room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, okay. I'm just going to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Not there. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah. No, it's just a right. yeah. It may be that a kid doesn't pull up their laptop, you know, depending on what the learning intention is for that, that day. But um, 
It's just it just helps to monitor the use of the computer as well during class. I'm assuming it's done with like scroll moments. So I guess my only concern is, and again, I think it's marvelous now. I understand what you're doing with it, but you don't need to develop a commodity when you're at the computer. I'm just thinking high school students and college students and adults sometimes need to, and that is not, we don't worry. So once they're in high school, we're not monitoring where they're going and what they're doing. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's in yeah. high school too. Yeah. It's, it's being used. It's just that it's that used twenty four seven. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. Because okay. certain times, I mean, there's still a time when they get their questions. Well, and you can have a great students. It's all the best. Students have the research. There's a lot of things. And as kids get older and more developed, it's more developmentally appropriate to have the autonomy. You know, that release of responsibility um, is there. Um, and however, there may be some students in whatever, for whatever reason, in a certain class period, may need a little bit more structure than a different group. And so a teacher can differentiate accordingly. Yeah, it's, it's not a blanket program that we apply across all kids. Okay. A teacher can choose at any given moment of time what's allowed and what's not. Very good. And then just to add to that, I've seen a lot of teachers give them direct feedback to students. They continue to circulate, but also if they notice something, maybe you have a child or student who has a hard time circulating, and that's just why we're doing a great job and really like what we're seeing with both the great work and we think we can go forward to Thank you. I have a um, blow into that question, but I think um, I heard you mention, and thank you for the very comprehensive update as well. Um, it's kind of gave a nice sort of lens into a lot of different aspects and areas. Um, I think I've heard you talk about the, the needs um, around the um, handbook or mm -hmm. policies. Yes. And by no means is there an expectation coming into that now. But um, I am wondering if there were certain themes of kind of questioning or things that came up that more kids asked about or teachers asked about or things that were maybe to be enforced or anything like that. If you think about the developmental level, you know, the younger students and students can kind of give them a similar explanation without getting into the heavier words, you know, that are in the kind of stuff between the context and the lighter level. Um, we try to highlight the salient points, both again in the lighter level from three to five, especially five and then six, then four to seven, eight. But giving them the examples, you know, with regard to things and you know, student discipline, with regard to independence, with regard to disciplinary um, expectations, um, you know, resources that are in the building, um, bus protocol. So we, we try to kind of capture the and the, the larger scale items um, of relevance that are that are highlighted. Um, we also um, have incorporated um, our school counselors talk to us so that they can be the counselors to support that team and let them know that um, they are here as a resource to answer the additional questions that the district council also usually is asking from the teachers or see how to support the school counselors. Thank you. Thank you. I, sorry, can I, I have some real basic questions. Can you just remind us how many Kivas we currently have? Are they all single degree? Approximately how many students we have in each? Um, is there any three teacher Kivas anymore? Are they all four? Can you, can you just get a Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Right now in our building, we have eight teams, and uh, there are two grade levels in each team. So two fifth, two sixth, two thousand, and two eight. They're all the teacher compromised. There's four content area teachers, math, science, social studies, language arts, and then special education teachers to help the time contain a part of the team. Um, there are no three grades, so we don't require them. Okay. And then um, are we in Japan? This is very basic, but in terms of if buses are still going around the back, and if, no, buses oh. run off in front, they have for a while, so okay. that this way that helps. 
we change the flow a little bit of the students in the morning. So it used to be by the music family now, the shift them up right in the cafeteria so that they can access the cafeteria, get the breakfast if they want it, and then head off to class. And so we have some of the students going in that way, and then some of the students, anywhere they are, not going in the highway versus hallway where that way is as well. Parent drop off and pick up the there. So we have addressed that. Um, we made a video after the letter to the week before, just to help remind the families of the flow of the back because sometimes there was heavy congestion and then it doesn't overspill into the road. So to make sure that they're coming down in two lanes and emerging into the water. Uh, so. Great. Uh, last question. You mentioned about coaches. I just we had added a math coach. Yes, they are on the She's been with us for one year. One year. And how how is she the only math coach? That was She's in? our only math okay. coach. And how is that going? She she's a rock star. She is phenomenal. She has worked in kitchen with our literacy coach in helping present on the equipment construction. She also worked very closely uh, with the assistant and also the math grant, recognizing that this was an area of weakness yep. and soliciting a coach uh, to say, hey, listen to the person where you get this grant that you would be comfortable. Um, she's well respected. She is trusted by the people. She worked with the math teacher in the building on the grade 18. Um, and she has done a phenomenal job. I can see that I where you can then does she get involved with with the transition of that phase? She does. She works in conjunction with the coaches that that coaches down at the elementary level. So they meet at the end of the year prior to them coming up, reviewing the data, reviewing the assessments. There's communication um, there are meetings during the course of the year that brings all the coaches together. So they are able to share information and everybody knows that they're exactly the reason they do a lot of things. A lot of communication, a lot of people. She, she's been great at making this work, um, helping us do the transition, right? So we lost the balance. She also did a lot of research on different math programs last uh, year, uh, you know, prior resources uh, for math with one of our history math goals and uh, is supporting the implementation of the new math curriculum in grades uh, five, six this year. So. Yeah, so she's uh, great. She's been yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Suspect to see good things coming out of the math department at the local school this year. Great. Good. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, David here already did a really good job. <laughs> I mean, here's up to the same things. Um, high school, I think, was off to a great start this year. Uh, we opened the school year um, during complications with teachers with a building wide luncheon, and we also did pop up breakfast for anyone who was enjoyed by everyone. We kind of made that into we do a first Friday breakfast, but we've been kind of making it more. In line with TV days, so we can a little bit early and breakfast together and then move on to the beach. I think great for everybody. Um, we met at the beginning of the year with students by grade level to welcome you back and set some consistent expectations for the year. It's the first year, and this is in a long time that we've had the same schedule. We're going to move past the structure of the day and talk a little bit more about um, what, what we expect for behavior during the school day and a lot of focus to us. Um, was on cell phones and bathrooms. And those are two areas for us that we've been working on to make sure kids are paying attention in class and also not vandalizing uh, bathrooms. Um, we welcome Tom Morano in a very warm but well received uh, emotion into art presentation. And we're working on getting those two meetings uh, framed by our new again person that turned up. And um, we do continue to look at the daily schedule and our teacher meetings to make sure that in the post COVID world, we're making sure students have the opportunities to connect with teachers and make the flexible engagement as possible. That's been what we've been working for that seems to be working. Uh, that is not the first that I've heard about a request for one lunch during scare week. Um, we get to see the initiatives in one lunch, or we have homeroom. Maybe it's all about pictures. We want to be able to take pictures together. 
So maybe that's one room, maybe this. We still don't have a three of So we'll leave that out. Um, we do have a club fair schedule coming up for next week um, for everyone, but especially for new students to find your joint club. As usual this year, we have a lot of the same clubs and we have the new clubs um, that all actually, many of them started uh, pulling their act together a little bit last year. So um, looking forward to having some new things happening too. Um, we've also been working to reopen the Viking Vault, which has been, uh, I think, kind of exciting for a lot of the students. They started the year off by doing a little bit of a um, sale. So a lot of people are going to be getting like, some good Viking gear that they want to do at a reduced price. Um, and in addition to a wonderful back to school night, we've had two successful parent nights so far hosted by our council office, one for our ninth grade and new students at the very beginning of the year to help with transition, and one for seniors that are going through the college application process. Um, and in the first, for the first time in over a decade, we was on bike again, hosted a very successful region of the competition. Um, it was well attended and it was really a lot of my I think that would be one of the new events for them and kudos to um that's a game of the completed that. Um and our CIL 630 meeting with Darcy to look at our program of studies through an equity lens. So the work that we're gonna be doing probably for over the next three years, but we started actually today with our first meeting today. Um our teachers had two modules in professional development around intentional planning and explicit instruction. And they have also been training on Dino. And I can give you an example of what I saw, we actually saw a teacher um, who was using it to allow the kids to use their laptops on the essay and the exam, but he was able to monitor that they were only looking at the essay and not doing you know, other things and looking things up, you know, to help with other things. So, uh, it's definitely, we just did the training, so it's a little bit slower introduction to the high school with the teachers that are used to it. Um, are really happy to have which is highly the best for them. So, um, this coming Wednesday, our NTSS team and I will be presenting to the faculty about our NTSS services and referrals. Um, this year, we have a certified teacher overseeing the executive functioning aspect of um, NTSS. Um, which is providing our literacy and math supporters more time and opportunity to care for students and to also work on their data collection. They are very, very happy with how things are going this year. Um, and I think um, we moved one of the uh, literacy people into a position, a CIL position, and that has been really wonderful for that group. They, are, they I think, are being finally be able to do what they wanted to do for the last few years. Um, so that's very exciting for us. Um, we're also working right now on providing additional quiet study opportunities for students, specifically other class students who are not in structured study hall, but we feel like the promise is maybe not the best place for that study. And we're also looking um, to provide some additional space for students with allegations. Um, so as you know, we moved close to students and staff in the high school, and we're transitioning and integrating with the students and the program. Um, the Learning Through Interest program is open now and eligible for all these high school students. We have two students that were recently accepted into LFTI internships at Planning for School Program, which is tied to our show of early childhood um, education classes. And we have one student for LTI who's now serving at a state approved HVAC apprenticeship. Um, those are all students that were not connected to students. Um, students will receive credit and the work um, will be noted on their um, transcripts. Half days has received quite a bit of grant money, um, a dual credit grant of $49,000 in September to help with the two new English dual credit econ classes and the EMT dual credit econ class. And they also got grant funding to help um, continue to support our program at the Seaport for team building and apprentice, um, which will support the project. Uh, they're doing a team building apprenticeship program at the support, and it's they're um catering the therapy and learning program students for that, which is fantastic for them in many ways, both social emotionally and educationally. Um, and then we have um two new pathways experiences starting in September and October, CampNet Cybersecurity and Military Vehicle Maintenance. And a new collaboration with the collector vote for next gen will be starting with people for Amazon high school students coming to college that transcends and not in Westerly. And we have new collaborations also planning with Turner Construction, Radio Construction, and Smallest, 
and a group of students who are going off to a manufacturing career expo in September. Um, we're also continuing the collaboration with Porter and Chester and Public's Garage. So, Catherine has definitely been super busy. Um, and I think having Dave and um, and Helen in the building is helping with uh, just bring more students on knowing that that's going to happen. Plus, Dave is really good at all of the publicity around that. Um, and along those lines, we continue to hear really positive feedback about the movies that are coming up this morning on freshman parents and on race to be a new site. Um, and as you know, it contains a lot of important announcements, and information about events, about fundraising, community events, as well as school events, and also trying to showcase what's happening in our classrooms and our student accomplishments. Um, we've had a Facebook page since 2017, so I think we win right now for one hundred like followers. We've to <laughs> 700. Um, and we continue to use that platform to share information. And as you all know, Kevin Mark Hewitt's also done a great job. Um, which I just realized that I have to share his athletics post yet to the high school page, but he and I have been back and forth making sure that we're getting as much information as we possibly can from the two of us. Um, David Fazulo has had a few media spots on channel three, which we've also shared out through um, through our social media. Um, and I want to end by sharing a conversation that I had with the teachers last week that I just it was a Friday and it left me feeling really good about this school year, I asked them, how are things going? And one of them responded that she actually likes her job again. <laughs> the past few years have been really tough. Like, it's really nice to hear like that. They're not just here because they want to be here or because they have to be here, but she really likes her job. So that was really good. Thank you. I have a few. Okay. If that's okay. I'm going to go. Um, the pathway is just uh, it's, it's just so great to hear. And one thing is, can we get a list or keep a running list or somewhere of all the different programs that you just put, put I love part, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, it's so impressive, and it's yeah, I think even more impressive when I can actually see it. Um, what you're doing because uh, that is phenomenal. And then also on the chat, please have we thought? Of, I know, you know, it's growing and it's just getting ninth graders, but have we thought about? For seventh and eighth, or let's say eighth graders, or maybe seventh, like doing a presentation to them and, and their parents. I don't know what forum, what forum that would be in, but so they know when they're coming in, hey, we have this thing that we're developing um, that they might be of interest in. Oh, so, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking we do a presentation to the eighth grade along with all the other options, other school options, but we try to include more information about the that yeah. that we can do. We can do that. I think that's next month. That is next month. Next it's month. in mid October. Great. Yeah. And then yeah. the electric boat um, presentation that Dave has that we're in the process of setting up in October it is um, that's run and facilitated by electric boat, and that is kind of geared toward with wetting the appetite of some of the middle age school age students. So we're also at that meeting looking at incorporating and might be we might be able to pull it into the curriculum um, in our tech ed department. So both of our tech ed teachers will also be in attendance at that meeting too to see the takeaways and the materials and how they might be able to incorporate it. Great. Regionally, we're going to get us a lot of things. Related to what you just said, if that's right, pathways for, I think, not all the sort of non traditional roads are other I was thinking also along the lines of communication. I wonder if. I would love to hear from some of the students who are experiencing these. I'm sure people want to come share here, but I was also thinking about what you said, right? So the issues that, that um, could be helpful, but also have the student voice um, share. With our first student led presentation coming up next, um, but that might be a nice one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better yeah. We always want to hear, want to hear from you know, want to hear from you know, kids that are uh, yeah. in step as well. So, well I'm sure they would love to talk about it. Yeah. 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 Ye
I have again? Yeah, more of a yeah. uh, request. I think you ended on a perfect note. My request is can we get that person to join our culture and climate committee and we get him or her to bring a friend along with it. That's exactly what we need. Yeah. Somebody who likes coming with us. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Jen. May I introduce? Yes, yeah, please. Right. So I'm, I'm happy the honor actually to introduce some of our current seniors. This is Tina Lennon Bond. And you may have noticed over the last year, he has been mentioned to me many times <laughs> in our new life. <laughs> Um, he went the National Merit Scholar semifinalist. He also competes on our swim team, plays a saxophone in our concert band. He was captain of the team that went to the National Science Bowl competition. He qualified to compete in the USA Math Olympiad, and he represented the USA in the Chem Olympiad. Please give tonight to tell you a little bit about his experience, Barry. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Um, Thanks for having me. So as you know, uh, I was selected to represent the United States at the International Chemistry Olympiad this year. So I should start by explaining what that actually is. So uh, we read it as the ICHO. It is one of a number of Olympiad type competitions, which are held in a variety of subjects such as like physics, math, and chemistry. And the Chemistry Olympiad specifically was started in 1968, so it's been over 50 years, and uh, now there are almost 90 countries participating, and 348 students were present at this year's Olympia. Um, that is, each country sends a team of four representatives, so I was one of the four high school students selected for the United States. So, to start with uh, my personal journey up to this level, uh, the US selection process involves um, first a local test and then a national exam, uh, after which the top 20 students are selected for a study camp from which the top four are selected for the team. So I went to this camp uh, once in freshman year, then when I returned in sophomore year, I was selected as the second alternate to the team. And then, of course, this year I was finally selected as a member of the team. And, you know, the previous two years definitely motivated me to study really hard because, of course, it is a very difficult uh, accomplishment to rank in the top four in the entire country. So, um, but getting to the actual chemistry Olympiad. So, this year it was held in Switzerland at ETH in Zurich. And uh, so leading up to that experience, we spent a lot of time studying, obviously, but for me, the main draw of this Olympiad was, you know, not just competing with others to get medals, but rather the collaboration between teammates and being able to meet all these different people from different countries. There were also a lot of activities uh, which were intended to expose us to, you know, the real world of chemistry, which is not just, uh, obviously it's not just uh, solving questions on a test paper in front of you. So uh, we were very happy to uh, meet all the other teams. In particular, the United States team, we quickly made friends uh, with the UK team, as well as the Ukrainian team who we were sharing rooms with. And uh, we also had a poor guy and you know everyone was very nice and uh thankfully most people shared the same mindset as me so we were all very happy just to be meeting each other and being exposed to each other's culture there was in fact um a kind of informal gift exchange so uh the us team we brought uh, a couple hundred of these bowls to the olympiad and we traded these with other teams and, you know, I have a lot of souvenirs, which unfortunately I cannot bring today, but, um, you know, other teams were very happy to receive these. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, the city of Zurich was very nice for, I think, all of us. Uh, you know, we were very awestruck at a lot of things, including um, you know, the prices of chocolate, because of course it's Switzerland. 
I unfortunately also don't have any chocolate. <laughs> 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 it's been a while <laughs> um right other activities planned uh were not just uh well there were a lot of activities planned uh including visiting the paul Scherer institute which is a particle accelerator in switzerland and that was incredible to see you know very big facility lots of wires and we were also uh, given tours of the university and shown fairs with displays from a lot of different chemical companies. So again, that was all great in exposing students to you know what chemistry is like in the real world and how its applications are useful to today's society. Um, and I should I I should probably talk now about the actual exam, which is ostensibly the purpose of the Olympiad. So the chemistry Olympiad is unique in that it consists of two parts, one of which is you know a traditional paper test and the other of which is a time lab practical section. Uh, so this year's exam was uh, widely regarded as one of the most difficult chemistry Olympiads held in the history of, uh, of this program, but you know, the problems were extremely well written. And like I said, since uh, we were less concerned about, you know, just placing high, it was really a lot of fun to work through the creative problems that the committee had written for us. Um, yeah, and then on the final day, uh, was it was the closing ceremony and they also had a dance. So I placed 69th out of 348 students so, and received a silver medal. Uh, it's kind of heavy. I've been told there's some real silver in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, the gold medal is shinier. Uh, two of my teammates have one, but unfortunately, I don't have it. And uh, the dance was definitely the highlight for a lot of people. You'll notice I brought with me a tie today, and <laughs> this tie is painted not the colors of the United States flag, but of the Slovakian one. And uh, the reason for this is kind of funny. Uh, while the dance was going on, um, you know, a very drunk high schooler came up to me <laughs> and exchanged ties. So I now have this thing here. <laughs> and I think it really demonstrates, the, um, you know, the meeting of different cultures and uh, all the brilliant experiences we had in Switzerland. Uh, so it was about two weeks. Yeah. And yeah, and before I finish, uh, I want to just thank the people who made it possible. So uh, my mentors at the study camp, uh, my brilliant teammates, all the people who coordinated uh, all the activities in Switzerland, and of course, this school and Mrs. Finger for allowing us to take the U.S. chemistry test. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you so much. Uh, it's very impressive, and we really appreciate uh, you getting up here and you know, giving us an overview. Are there any questions? It mine's just funny. I just wanted to clarify, was the medal for the dancing or was the medal for the dancing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Yeah, <laughs> 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 Are you a junior senior this oh, year? Oh, I'm a senior. Oh, that's, 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 that's
Right. So I am wants to major in uh, STEM. I think uh, obviously I'm looking at chemistry as a choice, but I'm still uh, partially undecided. We have one more question. Sorry. I know you're walking out, but I'm right. just sort of taking in that really that presentation was delivered beautifully and very humble. Mm -hmm. And a couple of words just resonated with me. Um, and sorry to not catch you on the first round of comments there, but you talked about collaboration, you talked about mindset, you talked about partnership, building those relationships. And I it's those are all like the characteristics that are that are you know absolutely spot on with you know kind of your path to success. Thank you. Thank you. As a parent, I want to say I uh, really think it's very interesting. Thank you to the school, Mr. Kelly. I mean, it's, he started the talk for that way. Did you read it? This school district, they uh, um, educate this boy. And also, my whole I'm very proud of him. But thank you, the school district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's going to be a tough act to follow for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank well, if he is frequently possible, but I can imagine you could start well, about a oh, 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 um, so just briefly go through some of the latest and greatest in the facilities community. Um, just today we reposted the big advertising package for the forum that will include a Contract site visit in a couple weeks in the 18th of October. And this will be right now on the 16th of March. Can you order by the And uh, as you spelled out within the bid package, the construction will begin to start uh, as early as April 1st. And the contract is going to be to do so because we have a hard stop to get as of August. Um, we have a job opening right now in the facility shop for a part time body manager. And surprisingly excited and surprised at the number of candidates we've gotten in the lowest product so far. So, I intend to finish that process of this week and see if we can make an offer and whatnot. So, we'll move along with that sooner than we a lot of my plates before that's another uh, next week we will be before the town board of selectmen to discuss the MOU for the former dispatch building the name clerk is officially in our hands. Um there was an MOU that I put together basically put that we just initially that the town board along to their attorney um waiting to hear back from the attorney because then we, there are some changes that had to uh, the nature of which are the, 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 the 
We did put our new truck, which all into that from the first smoke walls. Oh, that's the plow. We had the roof scanned at a little bit of DVD last week to get a sense of what the real condition that had the line of the membrane. Uh, it's pretty funky. My work is going to be water. I was maybe not supposed to. It's not um, so uh, we will see what that turned out. The conditions, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be on here. That's true, it's fine. It's just whether that will be next. Remember those were done in the center and the living room and under the moment you're done. So, uh, as this year's going along, we've added a couple of things onto the CIP, which I'll be talking to some of you about as to the way we are able to do and how much money we have to spend next year because um, increasingly spending more and more money as the money getting older. Um, you know, that sort of in the track is going to be very shortly in the project along there. Um, I think Ruth has just mentioned uh, the tennis courts, uh, the recent addition of uh, research that needs to be done, learning a lot about tennis courts in the last couple of weeks. And as mentioned previously, the Center group is going to be the uh, replacement, not next year, then the same as well. A couple open contracts we have right now uh, the storefront number two system. So we replaced the entryway in the audit firm in last year. Uh, we're just waiting for the new parts to come into the other clearing site. So as soon as that's ready to go, that will come this fall. That is pretty easy. Construction didn't really get the way it was last year. Uh, we did come up with school with some sessions. And as soon as that's ready to go, we'll do that. Uh, we're waiting still for the new rooftop unit, uh, number six for the middle school to come in. Uh, we've been having a lot of problems with that being the most others at the middle school, particularly in hot weather. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've already, uh, I have plans which will be going out as well this week for uh, the next two years there, be number, number three, number 13. Uh, funds are already available in previous CIP allocations for those. So I intend to have those done for the next number two, uh, six early if possible. So I have them. And these two with the worst of what we had uh, eating conditions for students. And uh, continue to look at some opportunities for energy savings. And, uh, recently, I think we did a, I don't know if any of the right work, but watch the webinar on TV and it's on the grand circle to help for the charge of the I don't know that right now. Any questions? I have a question. How much for sale and sale? The past, it's not since late July. It's been working. Get up there, half day, or so every week. Um, help them with the variety of things. And our CFP, or the work goes together, CFP. Um, Troubleshooting some other long term problems they've had, as well as they've had to rely on a contract for facility maintenance this year. Um, it's been a challenge, it's been interesting. Um, they've been very accommodating. Um, but it's okay, you know, to turn it down as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. The next topic uh, discussion and action is the board recognition of the board's applications. So I don't know if everyone has had a chance to move do each year. Um, the last number of years we received level two recognition from the So, for thanks, Carissa, for helping put together. Documentation to support our case to submit also for double to again this year. Um, we do make a motion to approve, but I want to make sure everybody's had a chance to look at it and see if we have any questions. And thanks for the idea to go into the um, 
appreciate that. That is what is being said. <clears throat> that helps. And uh, lots of money. The bank money was wired into many family bank accounts. Even uh, Hi. Uh, and the bank closes in the discussion. Right. So we'll move on to administration reports. Yeah. yeah, just a couple quick items. Um, we had uh, some, between what we said, we had shared some paper about the calendar to make sure the district calendar. So we we'll were working on that earlier. So we get it to you earlier. Um, so if we uh, have a good draft of the done, we're going to bring it up tomorrow to and part of the PDAC committee. So we can do it. Um, it's all in the school committee. You get some feedback from them. Um, it's interesting. We can go a different ways this for next year with when you start the year. Uh, we're going to start before Labor Day, but uh, the, the dates are a little uh, unique because when you thought it's not going to be too late in June, too. Uh, there's a leap year that's coming up. So I thought it was a little bit of a, a little yeah. problematic, but uh, yeah. But I think we've been able to work it again. Like it's, yeah, it's that that that. We think, but it's, it's kind of reasonable that it happens. Right. I mean, there's just, it's one day every four I, years. I know. Yeah, it's just the way the day is gone. Yeah, and that's what's happening. Yeah. The way we've been following. But, uh, but we're, I think we've got it you know, worked out again. We're just going to have to stay up. Um, just support the piece. And we're going to get to you um, sooner or later. So, so we can have it down the piece. Um, we have just about finalized had negotiations at our last meeting with the uh, group uh, today. So we'll be going to um, they ratify the uh, last contract forward for a uh, review um, to approve. And then uh, I just want to add, you know, it's a great seasoning when, you know, being here the last nine years and he's been part of the swing program and I have my daughters just watching him grow up has really just been a treat. He is, he's a really interesting uh, student and he's done a couple of jobs in his world. So it just uh, puts a smile on my face watching him over the last nine years because I've known him for great. So I did a good job. Yeah. That's, it. That's all I have. I really don't have much for you tonight. Um, the only thing I'll share is that I my, my curriculum meeting starting first one this week. Um, focus of the curriculum uh, leaders this year will be around um, taking what we've developed in the way of our internal curriculum and um, publishing um, curriculum that will be posted on our website for public consumption. That's a part of the new legislation. So um, putting, you know, a, a lot of our, what we have developed internally is really for teacher use. So it's about scaling back on what's in our implementation guides and, um, you know, finalizing those uh, public-based curriculum documents. We expect that on Thursday. I suspect that will take us probably um, months to complete. <laughs> Uh, so my it is my goal this year to have um, whatever we have developed internally to be posted uh, externally. So. I think I have some questions. When you have to see if there's a lie, when do you have to like have them out? Uh, I have to check the legislation. I'm not sure what the date was, but like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say by July 1, 2024. Because that's usually when that's the demo to go with and do. Uh, yeah, I mean we have um, right now posted links that anchor back to the standards, which that's all of our curriculum is aligned to the standards, but it's not our curriculum. And so um, we've done, as you know, from my updates, we've seen in there within the curriculum work internally on really kind of out, and it's time to now put that up to the um, I'm to 
I have some data on this. So there is uh, a scheduled meeting for the mental orientation on December 6th at the Harrison Harper South, that's in Rockville. So if there's going to be any more members, that they should get the manual release to set. She got a lot out of that. And she went to that on December 6th. Right. Um, convention on November 17th or 18th. Um, they are planning and um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the phrase another. The superintendent's assistant and the assistant superintendent's assistants, like the conference, so that they can learn helpful events, um, function and why stuff in the vendor building. Um, they haven't put out a date yet, but that is fine. Yes, I don't know if your assistants yeah. would like to attend that. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Um, we had an executive, we had a board of directors meeting on the 13th. Um, which we had Charlene Tucker Harris there. Um, and she said that the State Board of Education has updated their website. They have added their five year plan to it. Yeah. And there is a link to a grant dashboard. Um, grants that are out there, grants that have been granted, and whether or not they're actually being used um, by their districts. Um, so that's a good tip that I got put out there is too. So that is all I have for you. Okay, uh, that closes committee reports and moving on to board comment and future agenda. Yeah, so, I happened to be in a meeting last week and I was in a store and they had this Yale media lab, which I kind of pulled and it caught my eye because it's kind of like Yale's integrating AI into reproductive and computer science course. They're using AI as tutors. So when cities are having a hard time doing something in the computer courses, the instructor has set up a, a bot, and I have no idea how AI works, um, where the kids can go and ask a question about how to vote in their class. And that. So if anybody wants to read it, it's actually really interesting. If anybody wants to read it, it was pretty cool. Um, and then the Out of the Darkness walk is Saturday, if anybody is welcome. It's just too much because yeah. we book our vendors a year in advance and trying to find a date open in their calendars is so it's just a year. As of right now, it is not okay. scheduled. So that's our huge fundraiser for the year, and it is not scheduled. It's just too hard to get everybody's schedules to like that. So it's a bummer. It's sad. And, but Cornhole has been rescheduled to October. Which is on Wednesday. That's for the deal. But yeah, no corn hall, which is uh, no oyster fest, so that was good. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Uh, just a reminder that this Saturday, September 30th, is the New Hampshire Heritage Day. Uh, and the books, uh, one one to four, so there's going to be some family activities. So, um, there's an opportunity to learn more about the Atlantic um, tribe. Um, that originally had a sense of this area. So, uh, this is the third year we've been having those two good um, events for specifically for the families. So, we can also learn more about that. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, um, field trips, we have, um, on the agenda, we can use the party consent agenda where we see those Do we work on the proposal that are the proposal that are the proposal I don't think exactly, like you were saying, if, if a, a teacher brings forward a new proposal to go overseas. Um, not overseas, but out of state. Out of state. Um, safety factors into it if they're run by a company. Uh, that's a big component. 
Uh, I think it'll be significant. How do we know about it? Yeah. Not why? It's around the communication, but I'm ready to see some of the American Well, you see, though, you've only seen the ones that go out of the country because I I think the ones that go out of state, so I never bring this whole thing to work. That's probably how we don't understand this. Yeah, I mean, I guess if there are numbers in England here, a little bit more about, um, you know, if you have lost any jail drugs and then. Change and just to hear a little bit of the background, you know, what is. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's much kind of different. So, there's few that yeah, not very many go out. There, there aren't any that go out anymore. That's the about middle school, high school, high school. I was actually school, thinking about Stanford high school, yeah. but um, because you know, but yeah, I mean, I think that's what I was. Just some kind of band Yeah, you know, there's like pre COVID things that we've done that have been paused. Now we're trying to bring things back. You know, we're in the whole world that we follow, I guess, right? So, you know, different considerations of that. It's actually just a good thing. Yeah, that, 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 that was, that was more overcoming the strength level where we stay with the dish dry crunch and the supplemental. It's still, it's a little unruly for certain times that um, we've made more progress, but until we go to high school. Sports, 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 Yeah, we can we can look at kind of this. Uh, well, I was just gonna maybe start with things that um that we've done and we're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're ready. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. We could try and pull like a little bit of data or one exchange. So oh, that would be good. Or, yeah, yeah. Not, not going to be then. We don't need now to see if we can answer any of these. Well, that's where you got to be probably updated. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the main thing. But yeah, so we can talk. See if they say, try and go back and see if there's anything. There's a bunch in the spring that go to Six Flags. Like you said, down in New York City. A lot of either music, theater, physics, and athletics. Uh, not very many. We don't have very many. But they, I can only think of one of them. Yeah. It is still free, like breakfast and just breakfast. Just breakfast. Okay, so just breakfast is for correct. Okay, so they are responsible for their lunch. Correct. And then uh, free lunches are free, and then yeah, reduced I, lunches are free as well, right? Because the state, as soon as we get reduced, free and reduced, free and reduced, the reduced their income, their income is reduced. And for the reduced, if the federal government is picking up, to bring it to reduce, I think Connecticut, Maine, and that one, that last bit, Connecticut agreed to the reduced lunches for students is also free to them. I'm just curious. State, 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 state. No, this just came up while I was traveling. I was traveling with a couple of educators. And we've gotten hot, uh, a heated discussion about New York. Yeah, and sure. what different states are coming from? Yeah, if you want to talk to Chris or Richie, he can present to you. Okay, I'll just ask him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he can explain exactly as to what all the programs are. I don't know if you can explain anything. Yeah, I don't know if you can explain anything. 